Well, good morning, Connection Church. Thank you, everybody, for joining us online today. Hey, maybe you're at home. Maybe you're watching this later in the day. First of all, we're glad you're here with us today. I want you to just create an atmosphere where the Holy Spirit can move. We're going to start out with worship, and I want to encourage you, just let the presence of God fill you. Because today is a wonderful day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. So just, uh, just relax, enjoy, and tune in. Turn them speakers up, all right? And here we go. Let's worship together. Enough to 
God, that Praise freedom you, comes God. from you, Lord. Praise we seek you, your freedom that only can come from you. Love that lives in me. It's for 
for you, Lord, my Savior King. He breaks the sin that's binding, leads me to a place of freedom. I'm gonna lift my hands till I can reach heaven. I'm gonna shout your name. Till the walls come falling down I've come to worship I've come to worship I'm gonna sing my song Like I am unashamed I'm gonna shout for joy At the mention of your name I've come to worship I've come to worship There's no one Wash me clean like you, Lord. There's nothing in this world that can free me. You save my soul. I'm gonna lift my hands till I can reach heaven. I'm gonna shout your name till the walls come falling down. I've come to worship, I've come to worship, I'm gonna sing my song, like I am unashamed, I'm gonna shout for joy, at the mention of your name, I've come to worship, I've come to worship, there's no one Wash me clean like you, Lord. There's nothing in this world that can free me. You save my soul. I'm gonna lift my hands till I can reach heaven. I'm gonna shout your name till the walls come falling down. I've come to worship, I've come to worship, I'm gonna sing my song, like I am unashamed, I'm gonna shout for joy, at the mention of your name, I've come to worship, I've come to worship, yes, we've come to worship. I love that first verse. There's a calm that covers me when I kneel down at your feet. It's a place of healing. It's a place where I find freedom. Right where you are in your living room this morning, listen to this verse. It's in Hebrews 14, 16, or excuse me, 4, 16. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. Come boldly this morning, church. Come boldly to the throne room of God this morning. There, will, there we will receive His mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. How many of you know that we, knew, we need it most right now? His grace, His mercy, His love. Right in their, your living room, you can receive comfort peace and strength let it fall over you just right now just lift your hands and let it fall over you God can fill you right now he can give you that peace he can give you that comfort and he can give you the strength for today and the days ahead he's the one that's our source he's the only one that's gonna give it to you like you need he's the one that fills that space in us that's filled that can be filled with fear the world's trying to bring it on us but we don't have to take it we can just cast that off and say Lord give me your peace this morning it's that simple let me pray for you today 
Father, I thank you for everyone that's watching today. Lord God, right there in their living rooms, if they're at work or even on their, in their car, on the phone, wherever they're at, Lord God, Father, I ask that you would fill them with your peace, your comfort, your strength today. Father, your hope, your hope, Lord God, for the days ahead. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, thank you, worship team. You did awesome today. You guys are just so wonderful. Thank you, everyone, that's joining us online today. <laughs> My name is Cindy. I'm one of the pastors here on staff. Did you notice that our worship, if you've watched this before, and this is your home church, that our worship team has grown? We are so excited. You know, God is faithful. We have been praying for a year. God is so faithful. Faithful. His timing is perfect, and he has brought on two wonderful people, Wes and Trina Nutter. We are so thankful that they're joining the team. So thank you, Wes and Trina. <laughs> uh, so this morning, I have some church news that I'm real excited about. Um, we um, online to. Uh, we have Kids Church Online. Your adults are watching, but you know we have Kids Church Online, and all you need to do is go to Chris. Uh, connectionministries.com uh, and you just go right to the front web page and they're right there we have preschool we have um, elementary age you know parents I and I just didn't want to encourage you sit and watch it with your kids and stand up and, and praise and worship with them and and uh, enter in with them it can be a really uh, good family bonding time uh, for you, and uh, so I just want to encourage you with that we do have something for your kids so in case you didn't know that and then also, uh, you know, with everything that's going on and social distancing and quarantining and we're confined to our homes, um, small groups are still going online. Uh, we are doing them virtually so we can connect and stay in touch with each other. And so um, I'm really excited about that too. So things have maybe changed a little bit, but we're still moving forward. So that's awesome. And um, just again, I want to thank you for joining us online. And I, and I want to give a big shout out to my uh, sister-in-law, Dana. She watches us online. I found out, you know, how many of you know that during this time, you know, we're getting more closer to our families. And we're just so grateful for everyone that's watching and our church family too. We love you. We miss you. We miss your smiling faces in the room and your presence, and uh, it means so much to us. And just want you to know we're missing you. So, with that, I want to welcome Pastor Jerry up. That's right. Thank you. Yes, uh, I'm in agreement with that. And so we welcome you, and we we love our church family. We love people that are joining us that maybe don't normally do that. And so we're just thankful you're with us today. Um, before I get started, I, I do have a message. I'm going to continue a series of hope. And I've got part two today, but before I do that, I just want to, I mentioned it last week, I want to continue with this, and it's pretty cool, it, it's very, uh, would you say, organic, or it's been grown from within. The Holy Spirit started among several pastors um, to have a prayer that goes out every week, and uh, and it started with just a few churches, and then they, then they let all of us that are in the network know. Now it's spread all over the world. And so when you go to their map, you can see the map, all the spots, and all over the world this is happening. And so what I have a, I have a prayer that I'm going to pray with us today. And so you can follow along with that. If you're on our webpage, you can click the link and it'll take you to it uh, sometime and you can read the prayer. But there's one additional part that I didn't mention last week that, that is really cool and I want to remind you. Um, it's going around the world and um, you know the Bible teaches us if, if we will humble ourselves and pray, then God's going to heal our land, amen? And so it's from 2 Chronicles 7, 14. And if you will think about it, if you will set your clock on your smartphone, that's the best way to do it, for 7, 14 a.m. and 7, 14 p.m. every day, just have it go off. It doesn't have to be a long prayer. Just take some time. Maybe it's a sentence, Lord, just heal our land. But just be that reminder. Think of that going all over the world. All, it's the cry of us. And you might say, well, 7.15 is too early. Well, don't worry. You can do it at 8.15 because, 9.15 because, you know, yeah, I mean, in a different time because there's 24 time zones around the world. And so you'll, be, you'll still be in unity. You just won't be in unity in the Pacific Northwest. But it doesn't matter. You may have a heart. You may have a heart for the East Coast or you may have a heart for Hawaii. And so you want to be lined up with their time at 7.14. Whatever works, the idea is that we do this, that we pray. Again, you don't pray this whole prayer twice a day, but just take a moment and pause. 
Just pause, Lord, heal our land when that little alarm goes off. And so that's what uh, Pastor Sidney and I are going to start doing. I encourage you all to do the same thing. Let me just kind of go over the prayer with us today. I'll just read it. If you would just, uh, it's written by several pastors. They put it together and it's distributed again all over the world. It comes out every Sunday morning. And I don't know how long this will continue. Probably as long as we need it. And so we wish we just did an agreement as an ARC church that we're going to read this together. So just listen up and pray and receive. If you have a copy of it, read, and, read it in front of you. But this is the prayer. Lord, we humble ourselves before you today in prayer. Our hearts are saddened by the reports coming from our own nation and around the world of the continued spread and devastation of COVID-19. Today, we draw near to your throne of grace in confidence and faith, knowing you will hear our prayer. Your word says that though we, we were a people who were once in darkness without you, you are merciful to us, and we were called out of darkness into your marvelous light. You made us a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You are a God who is full of mercy, compassion, and grace. You said we can receive mercy in our time of need. We need your help. We cry out to you because our world is truly in a desperate place. COVID-19 has created a dire time of need, but we are standing in faith on the promises of your word. Amen. Today, we all of us we are believing that as you appointed the old testament priest to stand in the gap as intercessors to see the plagues and disease eradicated so you will use the church to intercede that's us church we are the church to intercede and see covid 19 eradicated from the earth therefore we stand as your royal priesthood and take authority over the covid 19 virus we pray covid 19 will be eradicated the victims will be healed. The doctors, the nurses, the scientists, the first responders, the vulnerable will be protected. We ask all these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, today, um, again, we're just, uh, just glad to be together with you. As I uh, speak into you, i got a message to share. And I uh, hope you have the notes. If not, just follow along, and, uh, and, and I think I can take you where we need to go. So it's, it's our second in a series on hope, and so it's just simply called Hope 2 because it's part two. And, uh, and so let me just begin by, by, by just saying, as we prayed earlier, just taking a pause. I know I even have to do it right now. I mean, th there's an anxiousness in me. I have to be honest. You know, it's like I want, I want, I want our church together. I want people together. I want families together. I want, I want people to get their jobs back. All those sorts of things. But sometimes, like this time, you're doing it because you're choosing this time. We just got to take a pause and uh, take this pause and enjoy the fact that the Word of God is going to minister to us and uh, the, the the spirit of god is moving across this land amen so let's pray father we we continue to pray father we prayed that general prayer lord that covers covers the entire world but lord i just pray right now that everyone in the sound of my voice lord that they will they will feel your peace and your presence as this message of go, hope goes forth but lord i'm i'm a little bit uh, what's the right way to put it i have a motive here that i believe is from you not only do i want us to receive peace but i want you to use us as instruments of peace lord i believe that today people are going to see whether it's through texting or a phone call or or a smile to the neighbor across the street that that you can use us to bring that hope and that peace to other people and so as we receive your word today lord holy spirit have your way in us in jesus name amen well i gave you a verse last week i'll continue that because it's really good in john 15 7 it says this but if you live in life union with me, so that's Jesus speaking, if you live in life union with me, and if my words live, and that's my favorite word, this is powerfully, we've talked about that a lot, if my words live powerfully within you, then this is what he says. He says, you can ask for whatever you desire, and it will be done. You know, church, uh, this is the time we really need to lean into that life union with him. This is a time where we sincerely don't want to do life without him. When, uh, when social distancing is asking us to separate ourselves from friends and family and coworkers, where, where that's the norm, he op opens up an opportunity for us to truly get much closer to him. So my hope for you, my hope for me, everyone, is that we would have this stronger life union during this season. We would develop it and never lose it, all right? We got to hang on to this, what God is showing us through this. 
So last week we talked about living by faith, remember, and not by fear. We talked a lot about we're, we're sacrificial. We, we, we're, we don't want to be selfish during this time. We, are more, we want to make sure others are provided for. We trust God that if we're, we're praying for others and helping others as much as we can, that God's going to watch out for our own needs and our own family. And finally, I brought up last week that we really want to shine the light, all right? New, maybe you've been uncomfortable uh, FaceTiming people. Maybe you've been uncomfortable on Zoom before or just having to shout out to your neighbor across the street. But the Lord's doing something through this, and he's breaking all kinds of things off of us that we don't want to lose, all right? We want to use those things to strengthen our time, our, our future here. So we don't want to hide it. So we're just, let's just pick it up. And I got one main point and a bunch of little sub points here. But uh, think it, you know, and so, so just your first line, if you have the, the, the handout, use it. If not, just listen to me. The one thing I want us to get, if there's anything we talk, get away from today, it's that hope is contagious. Amen? All right? All kinds of things out there are contagious. We know fear is contagious. You watch the news. You hear people talking about it. It can get a hold of us. But hope is designed to be more contagious than anything, that ever, anything else that can happen on this earth. We talk about the, the, the contagiousness of the coronavirus, and, and, uh, and it is. It's highly contagious. That's why it's got us all alarmed. But we have to know, we have to believe that, that uh, our hope is is more contagious than any natural thing that could come across us on this earth or any any demonic attack that could come on people the hope of jesus is where we want to be today all right because you know when you go out there just a couple notes i wrote here because i was thinking about this about about i've gone out a couple times you know Cindy and I have gone to the grocery store, pick up a couple things, and, and uh, it's very odd. Even driving in here into the building, you know, um, Sunday morning there's usually not a lot of traffic, but I mean, there's like no traffic today, you know. And so it, it's kind of eerie. And so you, you walk in the store, and, you know, we, we, wanted, a, we wanted some, we, we're home, so Cindy was going to make a new soup, needed a certain kind of canned beans, and of course, no, they don't have it, you know. They don't, the beans are wiped out, and so we substituted a different type, and, and she's going to make that today, but, but and that schools are closed and businesses are shut down and uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I, I need a haircut and, you know, both hairs need cut and I, I don't know what I'm going to do. And uh, so all those things are happening, but, you know, I, I have hope because things are going to get back to normal. No, I shouldn't say that. They're going to be better than normal. Uh, as we, you know, God takes things and makes us stronger no matter what we go through. And so I look forward to that. And so even though we live in this environment right now where going back to my science biology days, this is like the perfect petri dish you know it, we got all the stuff put into it that's going to make fear and doubt and worry come across us but again hope is the answer and so so even though i'm i'm looking at an empty auditorium except for a few of our dream teamers that came here to to worship and to to keep our media going uh my hope is that things are going to get better than ever before amen and i believe want you to believe that with me and, uh, and just quiet your mind, quiet the naysayers, because it's going to be there, all right? We, we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to be carriers, all right? Carriers of hope. You are a carrier. I am a carrier. What we carry is worth catching, all right? That's just it. We just got to realize what we, were, what we have carrying us, the hope of Jesus, is more valuable than anything else that come across on people. Think about this. What we have is the hope that really spreads, that we, just as this prayer, that simple prayer, Unite 714, in just a matter of days, it spread all over the world, all right? Imagine now, we got, first of all, we had hundreds of churches, then we had thousands of churches, then you got, you talk about all the churches with the members in it doing it, including you, it's just spreading quickly. That's how quickly this can happen. So I wanted to turn to a portion of scripture from the Apostle Paul, where he's, he's, he's writing to the believers in, in, in Thessalonica. And they were being persecuted, all right? We're being persecuted by a virus. Uh, it, not because we're Christians, but because we're human beings, all right? And also, um, they were afraid. And so there were some words in here that give me encouragement, and I hope they do you. It says this in 1 Thessalonians chapter, uh, chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. It says that. He's encouraging the people. It says, We always thank God for all of you and pray for you constantly. You know, church, that's what our pastors, that's what our church, that's what our, our small group leaders, that's what you as members, we constantly, you guys are praying for us. We are praying for you. You're praying for each other. We learned that from the Apostle Paul. As we pray to our God the Father about you, we think of something, all right? We think about your faithful work. Man, can't you just picture some people now that you've known, great influences in your life for, the, for Jesus, great people, you see them out there uh, doing the works of the Lord. Just think of those, have them on your mind. 
We thank you for your faithful work, your loving deeds, and the enduring hope you have because of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what motivates us, all right? It's not for brownie points. It's not to earn our way into heaven. We just love Jesus. We just want to represent him. We just want to make sure his gospel spreads. And that's such a beautiful picture. Think of your own faithful work. And you might be a little down right now. Oh, I can't get out of the house. I'm stuck at home. What about that one phone call you made to somebody that came across your mind? Do you, I believe with you, the Holy Spirit prompted you, all right? Just doing those little things makes such a difference. There's a famous scripture from 1 Corinthians in, in chapter 13. It starts out, verse 13. Three things will last forever, amen? Faith, hope, and love. And we talk a lot about love, but I just want us to continue to focus on hope. They're mentioned in there for a reason, all right? It's just as important. Faith, hope, and love. The virus comes, and it's going to go. But faith, hope, and love will retain forever, amen? Forever. It can't, faith, hope, and love cannot be wiped out. We're carriers to make sure it doesn't, all right? Jumping back into 1 Thessalonians, this time back in chapter 5, he says this, the first part of, um, of uh, excuse me, chapter 1, verse 5, he says, for, we were brought, for when we brought you the good news, it was not only with words, but was also with power, Amen. So what did we bring? What do we bring? This hope, what do we bring? What the true hope is, it's the good news. And the good news we're talking about is the good news of Jesus Christ. Imagine, imagine when it's going to happen, and it will, because we got, we got great Holy Spirit-inspired doctors and scientists and medical people. A cure is going to come. We know that. We know that. We speak it out by faith. We know it by faith. Can you imagine um, uh, that, that, that when that happens, how, how it's going to be eradicated from the earth, how we're all going to celebrate well, you know what? The good news is like that too. The good news has put an end to sin and death. The, the good news has a secured eternal life. The good news is just as exciting, if not more exciting, all right, than the cure. And we've got that today. And so that's what we're spreading. Jesus, remember, he didn't come, Scripture teaches us, for the healthy. Do you remember what the Word says? He came for the sick, all right? Jesus didn't come for the righteous, did he? He came from the sinners. He came, he came that all would have life and life full, full to, the, to the fullness and that's good news, and that's worth spreading, and that's what we get to be a part of. I want to pause here for just a second and, and, and just relate to all of you. I know, I know even Pastor Cindy and I, we just, um, we get a little discouraged sometimes. Sometimes yesterday, it was yesterday morning, her prayer turned towards, we both suffered ailments, back injury and hip, injury, or hip replacement, and, and we focused on, on, on talking to the Lord about that and expressing that, Lord, we want healing. We want it to come because... Not just because we feel better, but we don't want it to hold us back. We want to continue spreading the gospel. We want you to continue to spread the gospel. So I just encourage you, be real, be open with the Lord, and just keep spreading that good news. And here it gets really clear. Again, we're in Thessalonians a lot today, jumping back to 1 Thessalonians 1, still in chapter 1, back on verse, or up on verse 8 from where we were. <laughs> and this is good. I, I, Again, you all know me, most of you, and so when I read scripture, I get these pictures, and, and uh, certain words highlight, jump out to me, and, and I was reading through this, and, um, and, and a couple words really stood out. So I'm going to read the scripture. It says, and now the word of the Lord is ringing out from you to people everywhere, okay? The, the word of the Lord, his encouragement, the gospel that he uses through it, it's ringing out from you to people everywhere, even beyond Macedonia and Achaia. For whenever, wherever we go, we find people telling us about your faith in God. So they're excited because they hear this ringing out. They're not necessarily excited about the hearing. They're, here, they're excited about other people talking about it, all the stir that it's causing. You know, I mean? We have a chance to just stir things up, and, and, uh, and we are equipped by the Holy Spirit to truly ring out. If you think about it, if you're in a public building and that fire alarm starts ringing, it gets everybody's attention, amen? And it, 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 just, it just changes things. That's what we ring out with the gospel. The Bible, the scripture says we have that same ability that when that, that, that fire alarm goes off, or in other words, the words that we're saying, it can shake things. It'll change people's paths. It will cause them to get out of danger and head towards health and life. Amen? We're, equi we're equipped to do that. Um, in, in the old days, when your phone rang, you used to answer it, all right? 
Now when your phone rings, the first thing you think of is, why didn't they text? And the second thing is, if you want to ignore it, you just ignore it, okay? So, but sadly, I mean, I'm making a joke about that, but sometimes we as the church, I think we've kind of gotten used to the gospel like that. You know, when we want to use it, you know, we want to let it alarm, we do, but other times we just kind of let it pass. Every time the phone rings, every time you get the opportunity to share the gospel, every time you get to choose joy and choose life, that's what we want to do. And that's the, the picture. Again, those are just kind of pictures that the Lord gives me that are, to me, they're funny. Uh, we want it, we were designed to spread it, amen, spread it everywhere. And so that's really the second, the first subtopic of this is, is that hope spreads, amen. It, it truly spreads. That's what happens. We want people to catch a passion for Jesus. We want them to have it and then spread it to others. That's God's plan. Because remember, when Jesus raised a child, a little girl from the dead in Matthew 9, 26, something happened. It says, news of this spread throughout the region, all right? All these things, when God does, when God's at work, it's intended to spread. When Jesus cast out evil spirits in Mark 1, 28, he said the news about Jesus spread quickly throughout the entire region of Galilee. In the early church, uh, God used his disciples to do miracles, and he's still using the disciples to do miracles today. In Acts 6, 7, he says, God's word reigned supreme and kept spreading. Kept spreading. The number of Jesus' followers in Jerusalem quickly grew and increased day by day. That hasn't stopped people. We're a part of that. We're the disciples. We're the priests. We're the ones still going after it, all right? So much news. So what did the good news and, the, and the, the, the word of God, what did it spread once again? Faithful work, loving deeds, enduring hope. No matter what our situation, even if we're housebound, if, we, if we're staying close to home, if we're, we still have that ability to always continue working for the Lord, doing loving deeds for others, Maybe it's time to get out a card and write things out. I mean, maybe it's time to pull out that laptop and write a couple emails. You know, whatever it takes to share that. And then just love, 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 love. I Just be here today, I was walking around the building, empty, and uh, where we would normally have all the Dream Teamers around. We would normally have people in the parking lot. We have people in the Dream Team room. We have people getting the kids ready. And, and, and again, I was just, I was thinking all of you. And, and just an over sense feeling of love and compassion and I know Miss Cindy and Pastor Cindy and the other pastors and your dream team leaders we, we all sense it we love that long we love being together we long for being together and we love you and uh, I just want to I just want you to know that that the I notice you we notice you and we love you amen all right so a couple sub points here is is fear is contagious but so is faith amen and I'm gonna tell you about something you're a carrier, all right? You're a carrier of, of faithful work, loving deeds, and enduring hope. You are a faith spreader, all right? When I worked, grew up on the farms, and we would, we would work the ryegrass fields, and we would use fertilizer spreaders, and they would, they would, they would, they would be spread all over those dry fields. And the seeds were, were drilled in, and we'd spread the fertilizer out, and, it, and it, it, it allowed it to grow and grow strong. And that's what you and I are. We're, we're carriers. We are spreaders. We can do that. Amen? If you get close to me, you're going to catch what I have. And I'm not talking no virus. I'm going to talk about the love of God. As people get close to you, it's the same thing. We're talking about the spread of the love of Jesus. So we want to go into the world and shine. This day will pass, all right? Every day is new. There will be a day when we will return back to not normal, but better than normal. There will be a day where we'll have more contact. But don't give up. Find opportunities that you have now. Um, and, and then we don't want to lose that, all right? It may be digitally, it may be cell phone, all kinds of stuff. The second sub-point of that is that I have is that love really, tr love really truly spreads. Yeah. Jesus said that they'll know our disciples. They'll know we are disciples by the way we hoard water. No. They'll know we're disciples <laughs> by the way we hunker down in our homes. I'm not saying it's wrong to stay in your home, but I'm just saying that's not how they know, right? The way they know is how we show love for one another. And I just want to personally thank, you guys have been reaching out to me and Pastor Cindy. Just people loving on us. It's like, wow, God, this is real. John 13, 35 says, For when you demonstrate the same love I have for you, love for you by loving one another, everyone will know that you are my true followers. Love one another. Connect. Bring supply to whatever's needed. Amen. 
We've got the hope that no virus can ever kill. I kind of talked about things being normal again, and so I just want to speak into that with you. as like, you know, do we hope that things will return normal again? And, and I just want you to know, and I hope you do the same, I have something way beyond that. My vision for the future that I believe is confirmed by the Holy Spirit in each of us is that we don't want to be just back to normal. We don't want to be the type that just let our cell phones ring spiritually, and when we feel like it, answer it, you know? No, we want to, we want to be active. We want to be ready. We want to be sensitive to the spirit we want to do what he's wanting us to do normal was comfortable all right at times normal was selfish for me too it's like you know it was spiritually safe sometimes you know i, I thought like i was supposed to pray for somebody or give some sort of prophetic word or just encourage someone with the scripture and i have to admit there's times i've held back thinking oh they probably won't receive it that's being spiritually lukewarm i, I don't want to be that way anymore I don't want you to be that way anymore. We don't want to return to that. I believe we're in a wake-up call. It's a good thing. It's like the virus isn't good, but what God is doing is good on top of it. I mean, it supersedes all the challenges in this world. It's a time for the church, the big C church, not local, small, individual, corporately, around the world. We want to stand up and unite together. We want to stand strong, amen? We want to strong, bold, stand boldly. We want the church to shine. My hope is not the government, but man, am I grateful for the government. Man, am I grateful that I give the opportunity to pray for our leaders, city, uh, county, state, uh, United States, around the world. I know things aren't perfect, but the Bible teaches me to pray for my leaders. I'm glad I get to do that. I, I, I hear often that they want to protect and care for us. And may, we I may disagree about ways it's being done, but the central truth is people want to care for people. And they wouldn't go into government office, I don't believe, unless you really want to do that. And so, again, God can work on the hearts of kings. He can work on our leaders. And we're just, I'm just, I'm just grateful. And I want to support. And I hope you never hear me say a, anything negative about any government leader, any, any uh, and I hope you don't either. Let's just hold our tongue. And, uh, and there's ways that we see need to be maybe done differently. Just take it to the Lord. Just pray. Just pray. Lord, we need a change in this area. I don't think this person is leading us in the right way. Lord, would you just bring your, your will to be done, Lord, your plan to become forth, Jesus. And he will do it. Amen? That's the kind of hope we have. And even this one, and, and please listen to me carefully, um, our hope is not in the doctors and medical professionals, but man, am I grateful for, for people that have dedicated their lives, uh, research, scientists, uh, people on the front lines, uh, stepping out there, doing whatever it takes, healing us, working uh, to protect us, heal us. Um, and so I'm grateful for them, and I pray for them. I, and same with police officers, firemen, ambulance drivers, all those sorts of things that are putting their lives on the front line. I pray for them, and I, we want to do that. We want to do that even more right now. And then I mentioned, you know, we several spiritual leaders got together by phone and got this prayer going. But my hope is not in spiritual leaders either. But I love our spiritual leaders, and I pray for our spiritual leaders. I ask you to pray for your pastors here at the church. Pray for me personally, because we want to be guided by the Holy Spirit. We're grateful for the inspiration, all right? But it's all for God. It's all so we can fulfill Jesus' plan in our life. Amen. My hope is the one who spoke the world into being. My hope, your hope, is in the one who, who is all-knowing, all-powerful, and ever-present God in the universe. My hope, our hope, is in the one who opens deaf ears, the one who opens blind eyes, the one who can raise people from the from dead, the one that are believing in him and professing him as Lord ensures eternal salvation, life with him for all eternity. That's where my hope is. You see this third point here is you and I, is faith, hope, and love. It's contagious. Fear is contagious, but even more so is faith. Hate is contagious. You've been around it, all right? But so is love. Love is more contagious. Worry is contagious. I get around people that are worried, and I tell you, I can feel it come on me. But hope, and that's my message today, 
Hope is more contagious. You have to believe that. It has to be inspired you by God, not just through the words, but through the scripture, that the hope that you have in Christ is more contagious than any kind of worry or anxiety that can come upon you. So I hope. I know by faith, but I hope. I'm speaking to some carriers today, some carriers of hope. I hope that whatever you're carrying which is hope, is worth catching. Amen? It's a time to examine myself. Maybe I'm carrying something I shouldn't be carrying because I don't want to spread that stuff around. That just, just, let's just stop there for a moment. Lord, I, I think that, that inspired me. It touched me. Lord, show us, Lord, people in the sound of my voice. Maybe there's some things we are carriers of we shouldn't be. We don't want to be carriers of anxiety. We don't want to be fear, carriers of doubt. We don't want to be carriers of worry, worry because that does spread. But Lord, you've caused us to be carriers of hope. Faith, hope, and love. Father God, let that, let that supersede anything else. That nothing else spreads from us but those things. And Lord, when we, when we sense or when you sense we're starting to go in the wrong direction, Holy Spirit, just kind of guide us back on track. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of, heart, of our heart, Lord, bring glory to you, peace to those around us. Thank you, Jesus. What we're carrying, hope, is worth catching. The good news, it's going to keep spreading. The world grows darker, but your light, our light, Jesus in us, shines brighter. And so just say this with me. It's the last line. If you have the handout, I'll say it. I'll say it again. We can repeat it. Just say, I am contagious. I am contagious with hope, faith, and love. With hope, faith, and love. Very good. All right. Now let's pray together. Amen. So, Father, uh, as, as we're in our living rooms, as we're maybe we're listening to this at different times, we might be on our phone, we might be on a computer. Lord, first and foremost, our hope is in you. Hope is in you. We want to be carriers of that hope. Not just for our sake, but we recognize today that we too can be contagious. So we want to be contagious with hope so it gets spread to other people around us. We recognize today through the word of God that we carry faith, hope, and love. Everywhere we walk physically, everywhere we walk digitally, or through the phone, or through the screen, or to our neighbors across the street. Lord, we want, in every text that we give, in every Zoom meeting that we're in, Lord, we want that to be light to the people around us. And as you're listening now, there might be some in, in, in the range of my voice that say, you know, Pastor, that sounds really good, but I don't feel like I have hope yet because I don't feel close enough to Jesus. I got good news to you, with you. Right now, there's only, there is no like so close or kind of close. You either, you just are. And the way you are is just to receive his son. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, and 10 that if you believe in your heart that Christ rose from the dead and that you say it with your mouth, you confess it with your mouth, that you are saved. And so I'm going to lead us in a short prayer. And maybe you've done this in the past and you've walked away or you've never done this before. But will you just follow along with me and just say this prayer right where you are? Maybe you've got other people in the room. Say it boldly, all right? Uh, or maybe you're by yourself. The Lord is listening to you now. So repeat this after me. Say, Father God, we thank you that I am contagious with you. But I need to make sure today that you're with me. So I pronounce that I believe in my heart that Jesus, you rose from the dead for my sins and all mankind. I confess with my mouth that Jesus, you are Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I got good news for you. I got hope. There's no doubt. If you say that, you believe that, you are a changed person. Your spirit is made brand new, even through the internet. Amen? Because God is with you at this very moment. So I just want to thank you for all that. Now I'm going to invite the worship team back up here, and they're going to uh, help us worship a one more song together, and then I'm going to close us out. So let's just enjoy this time. Let's be blessed. And just again, turn your speaker up. Uh, you don't have to worry about singing off key because you might be the only person in the room. And, and if you're with someone, sing loud so they'll sing loud too. And just, just worship, the God to get, worship God together. Amen? All right, here we go. Just 
us to bring something that's so worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. sorry, Lord, for the things I've made it, when it's all about you, all about you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father God, as we're, as we're concluding our time together, Lord, we just thank you. This, is a, this catapults us into our day. Father, thank you for the ability for us to be together, to worship, to enjoy who you are, and to be magnifying your name along the way. Father God, I just pray right now over everybody's finances, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that we bring hope that comes from Jesus, that you're watching out over people's finances as they give, as they share, as they buy for others, protection from their jobs. And Lord, I know there are some already they've been laid off or things are happening but Lord you have a solution to that also and Lord we're, we're your kids and we know you're going to be watching out for us along the way we thank you for it today in Jesus name in Jesus name amen now look at me for just a moment just a couple of things I want you to know First of all, know our pastoral team. We continue to pray daily for you. I ask you to pray for us. And if you have any questions about giving or questions about the church, you go to our website, connectionministries.com. We have information on there that to help you with all that. And uh, and like Pastor Cindy said, we have worship services for the kids that they can enjoy. They're only about 30 minutes each, and uh, they're well done and they're very enjoyable. So please. Uh, you know do that and then uh, also I just want to speak a blessing over you as we go I did it last week but uh, I just think it's something we're gonna be doing for a while because uh, we all want and need the blessing of the Lord it's the priestly blessing found in number 624 all right this says this number 624 the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Go out today, people. Even if you're just going from room to room in your house, go out, speak peace, know he is with you, and be contagious of faith, works, and love. Amen? Bye-bye now. <laughs>